wait, just wait, just wait. This is torture. I know, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm Lisa and I'm taking you on foot through inner city Sydney to enjoy three magnificent croissants from three of my favourite bakeries. Together, we're walking up an appetite. Over the course of the series, in 10 episodes, I'm going to walk over 100 kilometres. Today, I'm taking you to find three of the best croissants in inner Sydney. And then we're gonna go back to my kitchen. Can't wait. I'm gonna make you something so decadent and delicious. Today, I'm standing in Pirama Park and walking on Gadigal land. Darling Harbour is over there. The Anzac Bridge is behind me. It's a bit cold, it's early, but you know what they say. The early bird catches the croissant. I'm heading off. I'm taking you to Woolloomooloo and to Redfern, where coffee culture is huge. And the best brekkie option, the humble croissant, is really taking centre stage. Now, I have been practising a bit and listening to YouTube videos, how to pronounce croissant. Ready? Croissant, croissant, croissant. The simple, classic French pastry can be found all over Australia, from supermarkets to top-end bakeries, and I'm gonna show you three today that are as good as any that you can find on the streets of Paris. So let's talk croissants. We've all had the bad, the ordinary, the good, and the knock your socks off. I mean, there's so much butter in a croissant that if you're gonna have one, it's gotta be exceptional, right? So what do I look for in an exceptional croissant? Okay, the outside. It's gotta be golden and shiny. Then there have to be lots and lots of layers. Seriously, the more layers, the happier I am. Then it's gotta be flaky and caramelized on the outside so that when you take a bite, it ends up either all over your top, all over the car, or all over your kitchen table. It's got to smell and taste of butter. And the inside, it's gotta be sort of soft and silky and a little elastic. All this talk of croissants is of course making me crave one and I'm super excited that it's only 50 metres up the road and guess what, I'm running. <sighs> okay, I'm in Piermont. It's taken me 1,788 steps to get here and I'm here because of Pioik Bakery. It is a beautiful family owned and run bakery that makes the most outstanding breads and pastries and loads more. Pioik means the bread in Egyptian. I think it's time for a croissant. Hey, how are you? Thank you so much, thanks. I have been dreaming of this croissant all week. But before I start, I've got to ask you, how do you eat a croissant? Are you a biter? Are you a tearer? Or are you going to get out a knife? I'm definitely a biter. It's the only way to eat a croissant. I don't know if you could hear that, but the outside of this croissant is so crisp. It's all over my lap. It's exactly what you want when you eat a croissant. And the inside, it's doughy. It's soft. Look at all the layers. Look at the outside. It is a thing of beauty. I am in love with this croissant. I'm going in for another one. I can't wait. Mm. It's so good. And while I'm here, I just could not resist this. It is a savory scroll with labna, halloumi, za'atar, honey and salt. I'm gonna dig in. Look at that. That is delicious. It's got a doughy inside, very savoury flavour with this sweetness of honey on the outside and salt. Perfect combo, crusty on the outside. I love it. So come to Pioik for the absolutely exceptional croissant and stay for the savoury, cheesy scroll. Now, I think I've got to leave this for the crew. Time to get walking to the next croissant. 
So a croissant seems like a simple thing, but it's really quite the process to make it. First, you've got to make a yeasted, slightly sweet dough or pastry and roll that out. Then you get a piece of butter, which you roll out. It's going to fit inside that. And then you literally fold and fold and rest and fold again. And that's called laminating the dough or layering of the dough. And what happens is you get all these many, many layers. So when it cooks, not only does the pastry rise, because it's got yeast in it, but each butter layer heats up and each layer rises. So it's like double rise, double goodness, that yeasty flavour, and that is your croissant. So I'm now in Woolloomooloo. I've walked 6,590 steps to get here. I'm round the corner from the beautiful St Mary's Cathedral, but I'm about to have a religious experience of a different type. I'm here at Flower and Stone, one of the best artisan bakeries in the country. I'm really excited to be here with Nadine Ingram, the owner and chef extraordinaire of this legendary bakery. Nadine, what you have created here, apart from your exceptional baked goods, is a community and ethos like no other. Well, I guess our purpose here is for community. Building relationships with my team is the most important thing. And on the other side of the counter, it's to nurture and nourish. That's what we're here for to make people feel good. Yeah, yeah. and we do when we come here. We feel it right here. Oh, I'm so <laughs> pleased. I'm here with Lizzie, the Viennoiserie chef of Flower and Stone. Can you explain to us all who may not know what it is exactly? So the Viennoiserie chef makes anything that is sweet yeasted. It can be laminated croissant dough, Danish, laminated brioche, brioche milk buns, anything like that, all the sweet stuff that's delicious. Your croissants are next level. Amazing. Can you talk us through the process? It takes seven to nine hours, depending on how many we have to do. So the first step is to mix our dough, and that happens very early in the morning. Then we start our lamination process, and then you start your roll, and you've got to make sure it's nice and tight, but not too tight. You get really generous croissants, yeah, and they that. are beautiful, very yeah. voluptuous. Yeah, my mouth is watering just hearing the process. <laughs> <laughs> I've fallen in love with this croissant. It is exceptional. Look at the layers. So many layers, it is so golden. I'm ready. I'm going in for the bite. What I love about this croissant is you sink your teeth through the crisp outer layer and then you go into this beautiful doughy inside. Not too doughy, just right. And the only way to describe it is really what Lizzie said inside. This is one voluptuous croissant. And you know what? If I keep eating all of these, I'm going to be one voluptuous person. In case you're wondering, I'm having a bloody good day. Look at this. This is one serious lamington. And how do I elegantly take a bite? I don't think there's any way. Mm. Sponge has been soaked in panna cotta. There is a berry compote inside. No jam for these people. Coated in chocolate. And you can see the texture and I can taste the three different types of coconut. Just takes this to another level. Need more. Mm. So come to Flower and Stone for the plain croissant and stay, definitely stay, for the panna cotta lamington. So I have walked 11,492 steps and I'm now here in Redfern, the suburb so well known for Aboriginal history and activism, community life and cultural expression. And I'm standing here in front of the Welcome to Redfern Terrace, which is quite a bold welcome to the suburb. It was created by a group of local Aboriginal artists led by Kamilaroi artist Reko Rennie. There is so much here to see and experience. It's extraordinary. But back to croissants. I'm going to introduce you to my walking buddy for today, Australia's boss of butter. 
I first met Pierre Issa, or Pepe, when they opened their Pepe Saya butter factory about 10 years ago. And I fell in love a lot with the butter and a little with Pepe himself. Your butter is the only butter we have in our household. My husband, Danny, to say he's obsessed with it is an understatement. Can I have that in writing? Because <laughs> we like those. So how did the butter journey start? Around 2009, I stumbled across butter by mistake, you know. We were making desserts and we had some cream left over. So we decided to churn it. It ended up with about 10 kilos of butter that was pretty bad. And then it became a bit of an obsession of how, how do you make good tasting butter? Yeah. I'm really interested what makes your butter, I mean, better, but different to most. And really what I want to know is why do I love it so much? Uh, look, what makes a butter better than any other butter is probably, you know, down to the quality of the cream, the cows, what they're eating, like all those things that make the product as it is. Yeah. The amount of salt we might use, the type of salt we use, like the, all those things, the environment that it's made in, how it's even packed those things really talk to you. Mm. you know, that's what I think it is. Okay, I want to see how you feel, really, about smearing butter on top of a croissant. Done. I'd <laughs> love to do that. Let's go do it. All right. Okay, so yay, I am at my last stop for the day. 13,067 steps here at Wild Cockatoo Bakery. Yum, another croissant. So I'm now inside the delicious smelling Wild Cockatoo Bakery and I'm here with Ray Chalmers, the owner and chef who I can see is so committed to his craft. Hey Ray, thank you for having us in today. It's a pleasure. I love your croissants. I, someone introduced me to them a few months ago and I haven't looked back. What makes your croissant so good? Quality ingredients, number one. Uh, number two, the butter I use. Oh, and a lot of time. Uh, it's a three day process. Three days? Yeah. Wow. Um, you can't shortcut that basically and it's worth every minute. That's why they're so good. Oh good, <laughs> I'm glad you think so. Super excited to dig into this one. Look at this gorgeous, gorgeous pastry. I mean, it's just spectacular. It is, it really is. And nice and crisp. It's so crisp, it's so big. Oh, the sound, so look fresh. at all the layers. Can you yeah. see? I it's incredible that. and the, such a deep color. All right, here we go. I'm ready. You go. It is buttery. I just love the the elasticity of this inside. Oh, just want to jump in. Now, you've brought some butter. Yeah, Yay. that's why I'm opening mine up like a piece <laughs> of bread. I'm making a, just we, an absolute mess of it. And to some, this is sacrilege, but to <clears throat> both of us, this is the norm. We need to put a little butter on our croissants. Yeah. So don't think it needs it, but it just is going to take it to a the next buttery level. Yeah, it's got to be decadent, yeah, right? This like, is really decadent. I just happened to have this in my bag. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Mm. I am in heaven here. Mm, beautiful. Since we've got this butter, I thought we should pick up a loaf of bread from the bakery. So this is Wild Cockatoo's walnut and apricot fruit loaf, and it looks so good. I just always travel also with a board and a knife, so that's so <laughs> handy to use it now. <laughs> so crusty. All right. It is a heavy loaf of substance. It has got a really good chew to it and it's packed with spices and fruit and nuts. I would also love this toasted with butter. That's what I'm gonna have for breakfast tomorrow, for sure. So come to Wild Cockatoo for the world-class croissant and stay for the walnut and apricot loaf. Three croissants down, they're all outstanding. 13,900 steps, 9.2 kilometres. The day is done. And soon we're gonna go back to my kitchen where I'm gonna make you something that you'll wanna dive right into using croissants.
whatever. All right. I could attempt to show you how to make a croissant at home, but seriously, this is something you've got to leave to the experts. We've been all over Sydney and had the best, so why make it at home? But we always have leftover croissants and I have something for you that is extraordinary. I'm gonna use them to make an irresistible chocolate croissant bread and butter pudding. I know, I know, I'm taking something that's already so decadent with all that butter in it and combining with more decadent things, but you know what? What the hell, people? Let's live. So let's slice the croissants. So I'm going to use a double boiler to make the base for the custard mixture. Dark chocolate, sugar, butter, a bit of cream, some rum, and a pinch of cinnamon. And I'm just going to crack the eggs into the same jug that the cream was in. Just take every last bit. So I've taken it off the heat, let it cool for a couple of minutes, just so it's not too hot for the eggs to go in. And I'm going to add the eggs just a little bit at a time. I worry that if I put the whole thing in, I'd have like an omelette in chocolate custard, which is not exactly what we're looking for today. Eggs go in, it's going to thicken a bit. And now it's just a matter of putting in the croissants. I'm gonna give them a mix as I go because I want every single edge, side, corner, inside to be soaked with this chocolate custard, okay? All right, now we take our buttered or greased baking dish and I'm just gonna tip it in. Okay, so that is it. I'm gonna cover that with plastic wrap or whatever you use and put it in the fridge for up to 24 hours. So this is one I made yesterday. It's been in the fridge and now I'm going to cook it. You need a bit of foil over the top and into the oven for 25 minutes. Then we're gonna take the foil off and give it another 25. This gorgeous looking thing is the chocolate croissant bread and butter pudding. Yay, favorite part of the day. Mm -mm, look at that. Now, who's jealous now? Yum. What I love about this pudding is that the bottom half is soft and really custardy and just soaked with that chocolate goodness. And I've got to have it. Sorry, I can't wait. Mm, unreal. So I want to tell you about the top because the bottom's amazing, but the top's even better. So you get the soft squidgy, the crunchy at the top. Like, what a combo. Mmm. So good. I don't want to talk anymore. I just want to eat. If you loved watching today's episode as much as I loved eating all those croissants, then please click on three things. Like, subscribe, and that little YouTube bell. There are plenty more episodes to come as I walk around in search of incredible food. All the details about the recipes and locations can be found in the description under the video. Thank you for walking up an appetite with me. Remember, there's got to be joy in the journey and deliciousness in the destination.